guys, Tom Mabo back again. If you're new here, please like and subscribe below. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Galaxy S20, which I have right here. Uh, I've been using this phone for about 9 months now, and I'll be able to give you some honest feedback on it. A lot of phone reviewers tend to look at the phone after about 30 days, but after having this phone for almost a year, I'm able to see a lot of the small quirks there, and I'll be able to give you some honest feedback about it. And without wasting any more time, let's jump right into it. First of all, let's start off with the name. The Galaxy S20 may make you feel a little bit outdated, but there hasn't been 20 version of this phone. The Galaxy S10 actually came out in 2019, but in 2020, Samsung decided to line up the name with the current year. Samsung hands down make the best displays in the market. Even their biggest competitor, Apple, tend to rely on Samsung for their screens as well. The Galaxy S20 comes equipped with 120Hz refresh rate. If you're a heavy mobile gamer, you might notice the difference in the graphics and transition. You also have the option to turn off 120Hz refresh rate if you want to save battery. I personally feel like the Samsung software is intuitive because I have been using it for so long. Whatever you want to do, just go to the search area and type it in. They even have a graphic here demonstrating the difference between high refresh rate and the standard 60Hz. You can toggle between the two options that you have and easily select which option you want. The Galaxy S20 does come with wireless charging, which is no surprise at this point. It also supports 25 watt fast charging, which is included in a box. But enjoy them now while you can, because I have a feeling Samsung might be following Apple to get rid of the charging bricks in the future as well. The uh, current iPhone 12 lineup only supports fast charging up to 20 watts, and it does not come included in the box. The Galaxy S20 will easily last a whole day of work. Of course, it will differ from person to person. If you are doing heavy gaming all day and running your phone on 120 hertz, it can drain your battery relatively quickly. If you're a casual user just using texting, Snapchat, Instagram, and watching a few YouTube videos here and there, there should be no reason why it wouldn't last you the whole day. I believe an average person, 8 to 10 hours of battery life is more than enough before you need to charge again. The Galaxy S20 comes equipped with a 12 megapixel main camera. If you don't know by now, megapixel is not the be-all and all. Fun fact, the Galaxy S6 actually had a 16 megapixel camera. And since then, Samsung has been going with a 12 megapixel camera with better picture quality each year. It does have OIS, which will help with your pictures and videos if you have shaky hands. In addition to the main camera, the Galaxy S20 is equipped with a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. It also has a 64 megapixel telephoto camera as well. It does have a total of three cameras, as you can see here with this obnoxious slab on the back of the phone. I still miss the old days where the cameras were flat against the phone. It was more aesthetically pleasing. I do appreciate the wide angle lens, which I do use quite often. So some design sacrifices had to be made for more features. At this point, I think people are used to seeing giant cameras on the back of the phone, so it's not as big of a deal anymore. Initially, I wasn't really a fan, but it has grown on to me over time. Although one thing that does bother me is since the camera protrudes so much, you cannot lay it flat on the table. I feel like every time you put your phone down, you're potentially scratching the camera lens. But if you're using a $1,000 phone, it would be a good idea to use the case anyways, and most of them do provide an additional buffer for the camera lens. The Galaxy S20 have a 30x zoom compared to the 100x zoom on the Ultra but it's not that big of a deal. I feel like the more you zoom in, the lower the quality is anyways. It comes with 8K video recording and 4K video recording. I'm not sure many people have 8K TVs or devices around at the moment to support it anyways. So for best results, just stick with the 4K video recording. It does come with IP68 water resistant and you can expand the storage up to one terabyte. They finally got rid of the Bixby button that everyone hates. Samsung moved all the buttons to one side of the phone now, and it does look a lot cleaner, but I do prefer to have the buttons on both sides. Taking screenshot is a lot more difficult now because it requires you to use both hands. At this point, a lot of consumers are used to not having a headphone jack anymore, and as you can see here, the Galaxy S20 is no different. Apple started this trend a while ago where they removed the headphone jack, which is a genius move by the way, because they created the solution to it by having the AirPods um, to counter that. And a lot of other manufacturers follow them as well, and as a result, we do have more wireless options in the market today. 
Originally, I was against the idea of not having a headphone jack, but at this point, I pretty much got used to it. Samsung released a whole flagship lineup of 5G phones since March 2020. The iPhone 12 just recently came out with their 5G phone, and it came out in October 2020. 5G is still not widely available, but it's still something that will improve over time. One thing you do want to consider is switching to a 5G SIM card. I didn't know it existed until recently. Whenever I get a new phone, I would just switch from my old SIM card over to a new one. But be sure to talk to your service provider so you get the proper SIM card so that the phone can be used to its full potential. The Galaxy S20 have a Snapdragon 865 as a processor, similar to the OnePlus 8. I had almost every Galaxy phone since the S3, and they do tend to lag or stutter over time. But flash forward to 2020, so far so good. At this point, after having this phone for about 9 months, I'm actually pretty happy with it. It lives up to a typical Samsung flagship standard. It has a really good camera, a really good battery life, and a very bright display. And the phone's also future-proof as well. And after close to a year, the phone is also very fast and snappy, so no complaints there. The only minor complaint I have is $1,000, a little bit on the expensive side. I'm interested in looking at the Galaxy S20 Fan Edition and see how that would do. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe below. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. If you're new here, please like and subscribe. Oh my goodness, you didn't put any of your phones on mute, huh? Show and professional. Working till nine only. Okay. Almost nine o'clock. At this point, a lot of consumers are not used to having a headphone jack anymore, and the iPhone. Hello, Time Mobile here today, and I will be reviewing the Trader Joe's truffle popcorn. And I would like to give a delicious y'all to this truffle popcorn. It is a must buy. Trouble myself. I quit. <laughs> okay. I quit. <laughs> he doesn't remember his lines. Okay.